So I made a first video on how to use Sorge overall. It's a way of getting started with Sorge. It's a free synthesizer, completely open source, and I highly suggest you can start you start using it, even though you're using paid ones, even though you're, you're, you're already using Serum or Diva, because it's a really powerful synth and it can teach you so much. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and today we will be talking about handling the modulation, the sequencers, and the envelopes inside of Search. I made this example. A small reminder is that if you're watching my skin and you don't recognize it, I will leave a link in the description where you can download it and you can just go into install new skin, it will show you the folder and you import to those files that you download and you can use Andromeda Dove. This is the skin that's easier on the eyes for workflow. Everything in red has to do with oscillators and it's even marked here in the mute inside of the mixer section. Uh, Defam routing has to do with the oscillators. Anything related to the gain of the synth is related to the blue faders, more or less. Uh, if you want to change the polyphony of the synth, you can click right here. Everything related to filters is in yellow. The Both of the envelopes, filter and VCA, are green, and all of the modulations are expressed in purple. So remember that so you can always think like, oh, this is color, it's this, you know, and you can search faster for the parameters. I made this sound. How is the plugin routed? Using filter one on the left and filter two on the right. That means I'm actually using the filters as a stereo spreading tool. You could use the unison in either one, but it won't sound unison from center left and right. It will be unison only on one side and unison only on the other side. So you will have to use two oscillators for that. If I isolate the filter balance of the filter one, you will only listen to the left speaker. Even with unison and without it. Right? I have a little bit of crossfit, but that has to do with the effects that I'm using. That's why a little bit of the right speaker is playing. If I go to the right, even if I mute or unmute the first oscillator that's going into filter one, This, you are not listening to this one, to oscillator one, right? Because you're only listening to this and it's oscillator three. I will make it without unison. Okay, so you get this really, really wide image once you have each oscillator more or less the same and they both have a little bit of unison and I'm sending one to left and two to right. By the way, the first oscillator is receiving a little bit of FM into it. Remember that this doesn't affect how much FM you're giving it, only this fader right here. But I can also make a whole video on how to work FM synthesis uh, using the search so everyone can learn because it's a free plugin. Okay, so the movement inside of this patch. First of all, the filter. There's, there's a filter envelope that you can always use. Remember that envelopes are used in an ADSR way of thinking. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. That's because we have the audio envelope that also has a certain amount of time until it hits the maximum level. That's the attack. The decay is always the amount of time it's it takes for it to sustain, sustain the third step, at a certain dB amount or at a certain level. And then release is how much time does it take for it to stop being applied, whatever it's uh, moving. In this case, it's the filter. So more or less, if you hit view, remember, and you hit this green square right here, you will get a floating window looking at your filter. This movement will happen in this amount of time, in this amount of decay, it will sustain at a certain level until it applies, okay? So remember when you're trying to figure out what you want to move, you can first hit play and with your mouse drag 
the filter, the cutoff, and try to make it sound some way, and then you have to replicate that with a filter envelope. For me to apply the filter envelope, I have to use these two yellow faders right here. Remember, everything yellow is filter related. So I will drag this all the way to zero, so it's not applying in any direction. If I drag it up, it's going to open the filter. If I drag it down, it's going to close the filter. If I close this a lot more, and then I bring this all the way, all the way to the beginning, all the way like an instant. As soon as I move this thing up, you're going to listen to a lot more high end. Okay, so in my head, what I wanted to do, that's the kind of movement that you have to be able to predict, listen and apply, is I wanted to start playing and then take an eighth note for it to start opening and then an eighth note to start settling down, sustain at a certain level and then go back to zero. That's what I wanted to do. So more or less, I'm going to make a much bigger movement, a much bigger gesture. Remember that any time parameter that you have on search, you can right click and set tempo sync. So it's always host time related. Everything is time related in this envelope already because I had done it previously. So I'll just set it up to straight eighth note. Then I'll set the decay on straight eighth note as well. So I have a quarter note right here and then it will settle down a little bit lower. And I'm not going to change the release yet, so you can listen to what the sustain is doing. I have to open it a little bit, so I apply it to filter one. Most of these kind of sounds, I always suggest that you try to vocalize them. So what's going on is I'm doing like mwam, mwam. That's what I'm doing, right? If you can feel it in your in your body, if you can express it with your own mouth, even though you look silly looking on your own, you're like wow, wow. And that works, trust me, that works. So if I bring it up, it's going to be like ah, uh, and I bring it down, it's going to be like mm, okay. And I want that movement to be kind of exaggerated. So let's make it more or less like so. Maybe I want it to go down twice the time that it went up. So instead of having a, an eighth note, I'm going to have a quarter note. So it ramps down. And that's rhythmic, like that has a lot of rhythm to it. Paths can be really blurry sometimes, so I like to include a lot of movement, a lot of rhythm in anything that I make. Uh, and let's set up the release not to be tempo sync, but to be, I don't know, like 150 milliseconds sounds fair, and that should work pretty much. So one of my filters will be opening up, and one of my filters will be closing down. So this one can start further up, and this one can start further down. So they will have a contrary movement among themselves. I will open up both filters and you can listen on both of your ears how one goes darker and one goes brighter. Okay, so now I'm going to play both of them together and I can control that using this right here, my faders of how am I applying it to both of the filters. And that has a certain extra pulse to it, right? I, I really like that feeling. If I match that with what my drums are doing. Remember to pay attention to the other rhythmic elements in your music, so it makes sense. So everything's moving more or less talking to each other in any way. Another thing that I can do is I can use all of those ideas of tempo syncing your attack envelope. That works exactly the, the, the same way, but it has to do with the level output of the synth itself. So you have pretty much every single option just the same. One very curious thing is that you have these really small white rectangles that, as you can see, you can handle the slope of the stage that you're working with. So you can have a slow start, a fast start, or a linear movement. So play around with them as long as you have it on digital, because if you go to analog, this is the 
only option you have, okay? Not only that, you have a lot of filters to pick from. I already more or less mentioned what happened. Remember that if you click that question mark, it's going to open up right on your browser, up on the page of the manual where you can read whatever question you might have of that specific part of the synth. And one thing that I, it took me a little bit longer to find out is that if you right click the number up here, you even have many uh, other sub versions of every single filter. You have a lot to play around just talking about the filters, okay? Another extra thing that you can do with the filters is you can make the filter one follow upwards with a key track. That means when I play a C8, the filter is going to go higher. And whenever I play a C1, the filter is going to go lower, but I can use it inverted. So I play C8 and the filter goes lower and I play C1 and the filter goes higher. You can apply that also from here and you have a built-in high pass filter. Remember this. Let's talk a little bit more about how I can make this movement accessible for my own expression when programming the synth and when playing with the synth itself. I could just right click any parameter on, on my synth and assign modulation from macro and I can assign it to any of the eight macros that I have right in the bottom half of my, yeah, third bottom half of my synth, of my window, and I can set it up to macro four, right? But this, this window is always strange for me. So I can just double click this and I will rename it envelope. Filter envelope. Uh, the space doesn't work here, so I would use underscore, right? Uh, filter envelope. I, I click once and everything is purple because now I can assign this to anything that is in purple, okay? I can use this one to bring it back to zero or get it the other way around. I can start from zero. I can click once and make this one open a certain amount, make this one close a certain amount. I close it, now they are applied. I have a visual reference in purple so that I know that that's being controlled by something, in this case, a macro. And whenever I move this, these are going to move virtually. What I don't like is that we have no visual feedback of this. The search team said that they might be working on it for a next release, but they have already have a huge, huge solution for most people. So I wouldn't even complain about it. I'm just going to make it a bigger movement so it's easier to listen. So I'm gonna hit play, I'm going to increase the macro, you will listen to the movement and I will bring it down. And you have a certain amount of expression within your own patches as easy as that. The whole LFO section under here is deep and I love it. You can assign pretty much anything from here, just clicking once and applying it to the parameter. The FX section can only be accessed through the scene LFOs or through the macros. So remember that you cannot assign these LFOs, uh, envelopes, etc., cetera, uh, using this one into the FX section. You have to use the scene ones, okay? What I'm doing is I program different ones so you could look and listen to the different things that I'm applying. So for this to work is I added another macro here that it's controlling how much the amplitude of the LFOs are working. If I go into rate two and hit movement twice, I can see that the LFO two has this being modified, or I can just right click it and see that LFO one amplitude, LFO two amplitude, scene A, LFO two amplitude, LFO two amplitude. So I can just also check in any case by right clicking straight into the parameter and see that this won't be affected by the rate. Remember that you can also just hit the parameter and check if it's already assigned properly, or you can add, add again the modulation from, and you can keep on going in this endless cycle. So I want to be sure that my rate is being modulated by this first macro that's called rate one. And this rate, I want it to be modulated by the other macro that's called rate two. So if I don't move this one, these rates are not being applied. Let me bring, in, bring them all the way up and listen.
once I apply the movement, This is maybe a soft kind of movement, but it's adding a little movement to, to the patch itself. And this is using only these two, only as LFOs. Once, whenever you go down here, the first thing that you will see is that it will say LFO. You have so many ways to modulate this. I just renamed them. That's why they have a different name over there. On the third one, instead of using it by right clicking as an LFO type sine wave, I'm using it as a step sequencer. Let me show you what happens when I apply this one using this amplitude again. I'm just going to apply it here by hand and listen to what changes. Okay, so this, this right here is being applied to my wave shaper, see? So whenever I hit this step, because this is a step sequencer, on step one, I will get harder into my wave shaping on my third, eight, 16th note, on, my, on the fifth, on the ninth, and so on. You can make this smaller and have it loop itself if you want to. You can also have it only happen when key triggering, or you can have it as a free run. So it always lands on the same times and it's not a certain progression whenever you're hitting a key because that could displace it if you want it really tight to the grid. <clears throat> if you don't want any of that and you want to go crazy and explore things, you can go into the random. So let me show you again how this sounds. If you don't want these really, really big steps, what you can do is deform more or less and play around with the shape of the step sequencer. You can just click, drag up and down, and this is writing steps on its own, uh, but have fun with it and like find some shapes that suit the sound that you're looking for. And since rate is a time related parameter, you can just right click it and tempo sync it. And you can just set this to straight 16th notes. or straight quarter notes. And we're going to move to another shape. So here I have an envelope. You have two kinds of working with envelopes. Let me move all the way to this one and let me show you the usual envelope. It's this one and it's handled with this right here with an attack, a decay, a sustain, and a release, as usual. These extra two steps are a delay, so you have to, so once you get a key trigger, it waits a little bit of time, so it starts applying this envelope, and hold just as in gates. It's going to hold uh, at a certain level once it hits the attack time. And it's not a sustain, it's actually a time measurement because it's not level. What I used here is this one, the MSEG. If I click here, I can draw any shape that I want. And this is really, really fun because you can add some slopes and you can add some different kind of steps. Let me clear this one out. Let me apply it. And that adds another small layer dimension of movement to your sound because it's not just going up into the attack of the sound, right? Layering your movement using all of the envelopes that you want because you have here up to 12 uh, can bring you to a lot of places. Uh, in any case, you might want something to move with the filter itself or the amp itself by just right-clicking it any parameter, I don't know, feedback, and go assign modulation from envelopes, and you will have those two here, filter and amp. Amp is down here, and filter is also down here. If you don't want to search all the way down there because there are so many squares, and at first it's so much information, you might just want to right-click and add modulation from 
either one of these. But in my opinion, this kind of applying is strange. So I much rather go into filter envelope and then just apply. For me, this makes more sense. Use whatever suits you best. So that should get you going into some more sound designing. I would love to listen what kind of results you get. If you want to upload a track to SoundCloud uh, as a demo of what you did and share it, I'll be more than happy to go listen to it and give you a comment because you're trying and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter how much gear you have or how much experience you have. Please never stop trying with whatever you have. Stay creative. If you like these kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, comment, and do all of those things that people on YouTube say. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.